What's up, everyone? Welcome down to the vault. And guess what? Once again, I have Mr. Mike Sloat with me. And uh, But this time we're going to talk something different. Last time we were talking about your videos because you are a great video guy. But Thank a lot you. of people know that do not know that he also builds amazing flying Vs from scratch. But before we get into that, like I always tell you guys, watch my show on your TV. It looks much better that way. And if you want to send someone a message from me, go to Cameo.com. Like any of that type of stuff. You want me to fire somebody for you? Just yell at <laughs> me. I can do that. Drink Death Wish Coffee. They support my show. And it's really good coffee. And uh, obviously, go to GreyhavenMedia.net. Get yours. That's your old Toxic Vault t-shirt and patches now. So, back to Mr. Mike Sloat. It's great having you back in the vault. Thanks for having me again. Hey, man. Uh, Spider was... Cool with you this time, huh? I, I don't make eye contact. I that's, think that's the, it. I try gotta... to tell everybody that that's the key. Right. And if he's chomping on something, just let him alone. <laughs> so, you know, you do so many great things. I mean, he's a musician, plays in a band as well, but he'll probably be on that for another episode. But I wanted to get you back because you make some pretty badass custom V guitars. Thank you. When did you uh, start doing this, Mike? When did you get into making actual guitars? I started, I lived in LA from like 2003 to 2006. Toward, in, around 2006, I was, for some reason, I hadn't been playing guitar in a long time and I was getting back into it, but I was really interested in how they're made and how come I never tried, I know woodworking, my dad's a woodworker, I've I never tried to do it. And I started reading the history of the Telecaster and thought, well, they, they made it to be like a utility. You know, it was just, you could take it apart and put it back together so easily and it's going to play the same. And I thought, that's kind of cool. So I started uh, building a Telecaster from just random parts and it worked. And I thought, all right, well, the next step is just to cut things out and route things i can do that okay now do you manufacture the bodies uh, manufacture the bodies and the necks yourself yeah, too from scratch from it's blocks scratch of wood. from everything yeah so then you're using a lathe and a router yeah. and all kinds of stuff exactly yeah that's absolutely amazing and so what was the first guitar you was the was the telecaster was the first that was guitar. the first one i built from like parts from just you know i didn't actually cut anything out i just pieced it together and thought okay i can cut things easily i can do that so um the first, so I had always wanted a V. Vs are awesome, and they make anyone look like an instant rock star. And I thought, I want a I V. Agree. I want to do a and V. They're, and they're metal. Yeah, totally. Uh, the V is metal. If you're playing a flying V, you know, Michael Shanker's my hero. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. It looks so good. Both Shankers. KK love the Shankers. Downing, you yeah. know, played a flying V. Yep. Instant you know. rock star. So I thought, all right. Jimi Hendrix played a flying V. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Right. So the first one I made was <clears throat> modeled after the very first v the classic 1958 flying v two pickups uh very simple you know body design um but it was you know extremely radical back in 1958 um so that was the first one i made it's got so many flaws but it plays great and it sounds great and it's heavy and it it just looks classic to me um Talk about this. This is your first guitar that you put together. First one ever. It's a so little it's, more it's, yellow than I wanted it to be. Not but. necessarily the cover. Talk about color. Talk about the process of every piece of the guitar. I mean, is this all, do you take the neck and attach it to the body on this right. one? Is this body, you know, yeah. so all the way solid through? Uh, what's the process of the body? And obviously, what's the process of the neck? It's basically, so uh, two pieces for the body. A left and the right because to do one big block this big it would take a lot of oh, wood. Oh, so you don't do it like that? No, huh? no, it's wow, two different pieces. Wow, I thought you did. No, it's a left and a right piece, um, kind of book matched, um, and then separate piece for a glued in neck. It's glued in. You can see here, it's got the nice. Sort okay, of, yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, it's, but it's very smooth. It looks yeah, like, mm. exactly. It takes so much sanding, so much sure. sanding. When you think you're done sanding, keep sanding for another day. Because it has to be so smooth. Yeah, it's just to get be. the right finish, it's got to be absolutely flawless which this is not but i got it pretty close on my first try uh -huh. um and it's a it's a rosewood fretboard just simple dot inlays and uh you know i feel like i i kind of got it pretty close to perfect on my first try um not to how old is home, this one mike when, when this is from 2007 I, st I started so about 12 years ago i started doing these um so that's the first one and then i've made a few 
others for myself since then. This is my number one guitar that I use for recording and playing on stage. And so, uh, okay, talk about like you know you have a single pickup in this, right? It's what, metal. What, I just I I never. What, what do you what do you what kind of do you pickups you use? EMGs. EMGs. I always use. Uh -huh. I love EMGs. Uh, I always just use one because I never use a neck pickup. I could for you know mellow stuff, but this is a, for a metal is guitar metal. and it's chin 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 exactly right. it's chunky and it's, chunky. I ended up doing uh, you know it's got a, a, a maple top that's kind of got a flame to it. Um, it's got a uh, ebony fretboard, very simple, but sounds great. Every time I try to go to a different guitar, I come back to blue and I'm like, this is the one. This is the wow. only Talk one. Talk about the process of making the neck, Mike. You know, you, so you on that first about one, the body. How, 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 how do you put this together? I mean, on the first one, I didn't know what I was doing on that yellow one at all. Uh -huh. And my dad had, before the fires, had a killer wood shop. And um, I put it on a lathe and just spun it, not realizing that that's not how you do it. Um, you cut it thin, you know, you cut the pieces as thin as you want to go, and then you shape it with, you know, a rasp, basically. Really? You yeah. do it with a rasp, Yeah, huh? exactly. Um, and then just clean it up with sandpaper. Yeah, How do exactly. you get it even if you're not using a lathe? By feel. You just feel really because it, yeah. I, I I mean if you were to ask me how to do it I would think you would take maybe the neck in a dowel right and 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 lathe it and then slice it down the middle so right. it creates a half that's what I did the first time that is what you did yeah because to then, me I'm a carpenter twenty years um in the union myself right. so I know I know this shit as well so. exactly but uh, if you cut it thin enough the way you want it the thinness that you want it it doesn't take that much to just rasp those edges off and uh -huh. even them out and yeah like i said i just go by feel uh -huh. if you looked if you dissected it this way it, it it's would probably not exactly it would be isometrically correct all the way right. down then but it's close it's it's easier well, if to it's do. close to play again some people like you know if you're especially going to play lead down at the end yeah. of the guitar you're going to want it thinner down there so exactly you can reach. and then up at the top here is where you're playing your power chord right. so you're probably maybe more thicker and and what's the difference of the wood uh, opposed to the tone? I mean, how are you going to get the tone out of the guitar? What do you like to use? I hear in uh, my guitar players, I hear they always talk about oh maple and, mm -hmm. and oak and stuff like that. Is that what you want your yeah. your bodies made of? Because they're dense, really hard woods. Right. Um, I went with the maple top for this. The back part is mahogany, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah, another heavy wood. Another yeah, hard wood. so mahogany and maple with a. I think I did a mahogany neck on this one also with the uh, a really dense ebony fretboard. It's perfect. Really? Like, it sounds so good. Like I said, I always come back to it. Even when I try a factory-made Gibson, amazing. I come back to this. I'm like, this is the one. This is killer. That's why I named it, if you can see that. I can't because I'm blind. Oh. You're my boy, Blue. You're my boy. Oh, you're my boy, Blue. I love Blue. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows that. We all know right. that. Yeah. One of the greatest movies ever made. So that's that's my main guitar, and then so a few years back I saw um, someone. This guy had made a uh, like a Celtic style guitar that was carved, and I thought it was really cool. And I thought that's I could do that. I love. I used to carve all the time. I love doing that. I love sculpting and doing all that kind of stuff. So um, I started doing these carved guitars that are sort of multi-dimensional. So this one. Um, do you play this one, Mike, ever? This I mean, one, is this I, when built, you do? I built this for our other guitar player, Kent, from my band. It's called The Incinerator. The Incinerator. Carved it freehand. Really? Right there. Yeah. So this is all carved freehand. So I built the guitar, same way I did the other ones. That's a bad-looking fucking guitar, man. And instead of doing all the lacquer and stuff, which I hate doing, I'm so glad I found this process, um, I did these cutouts. So this is all just cut out in the, in the top of the wood. Um, carve it out, and then I stain the wood, mask off the wood, and then do this sort of faux metal finish on everything. I put rivets in everything. Right. Um, and then it's just kind of a, a process of like adding a bunch of layers, adding a bunch of layers, and then covering the whole thing with black, and then scrubbing away the black off of the high points where you don't want it. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into this if you're in There use. is. There's less work than the lacquered guitars, though. I Really? The next one I'm going to show you I made in six days from beginning to end. The whole uh -huh. thing from scratch. But this is so much more fun for me, at least. It's. Uh, Do you put uh, Floyd Roses on any of these? I never have. You haven't? I'd made my, I made a uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen Frankenstrat, 
that I put a Floyd Rose on, and it's such a failure. I have to start over. Really? Because I don't get them, and I I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. I want to try, but uh-huh. it's it's the next. So no, step no for me. V's with no no V's with not those. yet. Eventually, I will. Someone just asked me recently if I could do it, and I'm like, yeah, I could figure it out. And then the next guitar, so we are going to this take. Next a look one's at. very. It's similar to this one. Um, this is. This one's got. Oh, it's much heavier. It's got a um, Game of Thrones theme. It's called the King Slayer, and uh, it's it's roughly the same. It's got the metal finish. It's got the wood finish on the inside. I see that. Um, it's kind of riveted together. Yeah, it's it looks got, very um, oak barrelly or right. or a ship back in them days. You know what I exactly. mean? Exactly. The this one I saw a. Um, for some reason, I did a search on like Celtic shields because a friend wanted me to do a Celtic style, and uh, yeah, I found a lot this... of the old shields you see they use yeah. the wood with the with the uh, like the iron. I guess exactly. Back they... So that's what this one and that last one were kind of based on was the wood planks and the shield with the metal wrapping around the edges. Um, this one I built for. Uh, we were gonna play a show. We had to cancel, but we were gonna do a show where we um, raffled this guitar, which we ended up doing anyway. Um, and somebody won it for, you know, 50 bucks or something. Wow. Yeah. And it's actually, it was my friend Dan, who's a guitar builder, strangely enough. Really? But yeah, this thing's killer. It play, It's super heavy. It uh, it plays great. And uh, I think I'm going to keep going with this style. I really like really? this wood I do, I finish. Think and, cool. I think that's your niche. Have you had any guitar companies come at you like, you know, going, hey, man, we kind of like no. your stuff. No? Not yet. And do you have any artists coming at you exclusively for that that might notable artists that you might? I built, I built uh, two guitars for Phil and Rob from Machine uh-huh. Head. I gave those to them. Um, when was that? Back September. Basically as a, you know, thank you for always letting me be the guy you come to for, right, for videos. video stuff, right. We've done so much sure. work together. And uh, sure. we were at the time we were getting ready to do like our 10th or 11th video together. And uh, I had been thinking about it a long time. And Rob had seen a dragon. This I did this dragon carved guitar that he really liked. And I thought, oh, I could do like a couple of lions or something and take the machine head crest and put it right in the middle. And uh, so I made one for him. I made a Jackson style for Phil. Right, right. And, Obviously uh, the Randy Rhodes piece. Right, thing yeah. I, his was awesome. I did uh-huh. um, I did the, the original Randy Rhodes pinstriping i carved it into the edges oh really and then i did the machine head logo here on his and then underneath here i did the polka dots oh the polka dots yeah sure. it was Same cool that one was slick sure. yeah um but yeah this is fun i want to keep doing this style it's so much like, more fun. okay let me ask you a question now so since we've had him in doing the videos what's funner what's better to do make the guitars or do the videos or they both have their their uh, their satisfaction when you yeah it's it's such two totally different things uh-huh. you know if I'm burnt out on videos and sitting there editing I can run out into my garage into my little shop and just work on a guitar for a while that's wild and they kind of you know great. they play off each other it's it's that is fun. great and it's fun to be you know a musician at the same time I can make sure it's dialed in and it sounds good and well Mike tell everybody where I know you told them where they get their video stuff when we had that episode up. Tell them where they can get a guitar built. You know, you guys want something custom like this? You know what I mean? Maybe you're not a rock star, but you still want to represent. You like playing Flying Vs? I mean, uh, I would use you for everything if I, <laughs> if I knew what you did. I mean, tell them where, you can, where they can get uh, a hold of you. Best this. thing is Mike's, MikeSloat.com or just Mike at MikeSloat.com. Yeah. I do. Can they look at, is there anywhere they can look at your guitars that you've built and things they may get? I don't really have a gallery yet. You don't have a gallery, huh? Oh, actually, no. Sorry, that's not true. Uh, My buddy Jimmy set up a Facebook page, which is, I believe it's just Slope Custom V. There you go. There it is. Uh, So there's a gallery on there. There's all sorts of stuff on there. Um, And uh, I do have, like, the making of my first two guitars are on youtube they so are you, yeah so you search so you for my name around. so s- search for mike sloat the making of mike sloat's custom v's right and uh if you're looking for have somebody build you a badass guitar this guy's into the cool shit that we are all the horror and all the you know the blood and all the cool looking game of thrones and right. all the pop culture fucking shit so yep. look at him for uh 
building you a guitar, man. I mean, this day, obviously they if he's got heavy hitters like that playing your axes and you, yeah, you know, Rob, I know your band, yeah, Rob your band, the your, your fucking band is killer, man. So, Thank you. and, and you guys play him. So anyway, you guys leave me comments and then let me know what you think. Obviously subscribe to the channel, but, uh, Mr. Sloat, Good for having you in once yeah, again, my brother. Appreciate Can I have you back in for other stuff? Because you do, you're such a talented character. I'll be here. He'll be here. You guys, I'll see you guys. Remember, tune in. I'm showing you the shit. Again, like I say constantly, leave me fucking comments because I want to know what you're thinking because you know we always do an episode where we talk about viewer comments. And for me and my brother here, Mr. Mike Sloat, we'll see you guys in the vault real soon. Mm -hmm.